Welcome to another video. So, uh, this is a uh, footage of today's workout it's Sunday. So as you can see, I'm setting up uh, my double end bag here. And, uh, the way I do it is I use bungee ropes here and you got to play around. Uh, sometimes the height is not to your liking. Sometimes it's too low. So you can see it right there. It's too low, which is fine. I mean, it, you can, you can hit it. From a low position it's just imagine you're hitting body shots but um yeah a little bit higher would be better so i'm just adjusting the ropes as you can see so it just takes time and patience right so you gotta adjust the the tension on both ends so you can see like the i used two on the top and i, I wrapped it around one bar a few times because i like it really tight because it, it gives you that really good uh, rebound. Okay. So so I got two cords, a uh, bungee cords attached to the top, and then one now on the bottom, which is fine, because I want it to be a little bit higher. So I'm just freestyling. I'm not planning anything. I'm not doing sets or reps or anything in particular. I'm just going with the flow. I'm just warming up. Uh, I like to do this on a Sunday because usually... Sundays at a gym or any gym, it's, it's pretty quiet. But unfortunately, today was packed. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the, the holidays tomorrow. So uh, my thumb is still busted. So I used some uh, athletic tape here. And uh, yeah, see, it's not tight enough. If it's too loose, it, it doesn't give you a good rebound. So... It's too slow for you. You know, when you're a boxer, everything's fast. So you can see things coming at you fat and fast speed. So that's why you want tight. Like Manny Pacquiao, for example, he's, his double end bag is so tight. It just it doesn't even move. So he's got to hit it really hard in order for it to rebound back. So as you can see, boom, 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 boom. I'm just going through some drills, warming up the hands, warming up the feet. My Achilles, both of my Achilles tendons are still in injured injured mode so uh, i put on some athletic tape there and i'm just trying to take it easy i still can't run without being in pain so doing a lot of cycling doing other cardio forms of cardio so on the balls of my feet and just going through the drills just warming up the hands this is like Cardio for the hands. Like, you know, if you're bored with cardio on a treadmill or cardio on a bike, cardio rowing, your basic cardio that you, you, you're you used to seeing, if you, if you don't like doing that kind of stuff, then don't do it. Take a break. Do something else that's cardio-based, like this. Okay, this is cardio for the hands. Okay, warming up the hands. Back and forth. Bum, 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 And over and over and over again. You just, you'll see me just hitting it nonstop. Blocking, just it, it all comes to you like in a routine package, right? You start throwing lefts, rights, and you start blocking, and then you start pivoting, and then you start slipping, start moving the shoulders. See the shoulders, everything's stiff in the beginning, right? So you got to warm up everything, it just all comes together. So I'm injured, my thumb is in pain, my Achilles, both of my Achilles are in pain, but I'm still trying to make something work here All right and you don't you see like i'm not using gloves i'm not using rat hand wraps you could if you want it's just a little bit slower a little bit louder but in my opinion just bare knuckles is fine just yeah you know, hitting you get a real sense of what you're hitting because when you're wearing gloves you know if you're if you box you know, when you wear gloves, you lose that sensation, that sensory, like where exactly your part of your hand is hitting the bag, right? Because it's so much cushion you're covering your hands with. And I hit bare knuckle now because my, I've strengthened my wrist so much that I don't really need hand wraps when I hit bags. So yes, I'll wear hand wraps if I have to box in a professional manner, but most of the time, I'm doing bare knuckle, right? Street fighting mode. Okay, see? Just working on the hooks. Hook, hook, hook. So if I'm wearing gloves, like 14-ounce, 16-ounce gloves or bag gloves that I have, I have them in my bag. The, the 
the sound of the ball is going to be pow much louder pow 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 it's going to be like like that smacking leather and a lot of people get intimidated when they see someone doing boxing in your gym so i just try to keep a low profile which is hard because no one else boxes usually or i don't really see many fighters even when i go to a gym with a, when there's heavy bags i don't really see boxers i see amateurs and uh yeah so i work on joe's okay so elbow this is from muay thai just back and forth back and forth just get a feel rotation right make sure that you're equal on both ends right from you strike and you, you recoil back right so i know you're like thinking oh why aren't you hitting it so hard why aren't you hitting it harder like bam like like, like you see in maybe some other videos you don't have to that's the answer it's all about precision when it comes to double end in my opinion you see the kettlebell at the bottom it's swinging wildly that can be a problem for some but i like that challenge because when the kettlebell swings around like that the ball moves up and down all right so if you have like like if i wanted the ball to move just like this plane of motion like this equal distance like this then i would use two kettlebells so that's a 30 pound kettlebell at the bottom i attach so i would put two 30 pound kettlebells and then it would move like this, but it's moving like this, right? It's like a figure eight, which I like because it's, it's, it gives you that third dimension for your eyes to pay attention to. All right. So I'm just, this is stuff you can do on the speed bag, but I adapted it to the double end bag because how can you bring a speed bag to your gym? You got to bring that wooden plank and stuff. And I don't own a speed bag because you need the, um, the wall attachment. And you need the board, which I don't have, and it makes a lot of noise, and it's too noisy for a home gym. So whenever I go to a, a boxing gym, that I the first thing I practice is a speed bag, or I put all my attention to speed bag because that's the one thing that I'm deprived of when it comes to boxing training, like speed bag uh, practice. So I, that's what I focus on when I go to gym. So I wish I had a speed bag. I wish I had the wall mount. I wish I had neighbors that wouldn't mind the noise, but you know, I have to keep things quiet in, if I train at home, which is why I use an aqua bag. So here's, a, here's another fun fact. If you're thinking of boxing at home, get an aqua bag instead of a, a traditional leather he heavy bag. And here's why. When you hit a leather heavy bag, it makes it's just like hitting your sofa, leather sofa. Pow, pow, pow. It's a leather smacking sound that makes a loud noise. But when you hit a, a water buoy or boat buoy or an aqua bag they're both the same material i have a i i have a boat buoy actually and i just filled it with water and i converted it into an aqua bag so it's actually harder for my skin and that's how i conditioned my knuckles by like hitting a water buoy instead of a water bag or aqua bag because an aqua bag is much softer i've hit aqua bags in other gyms and they're just really soft and fluffy and it kind of the when you on impact the the aqua bag just absorbs your punch and just wraps around it. But with a traditional boat buoy, those buoys that you see on the dock of, uh, I don't know, when you, you set sail on a yacht or a boat, when you, when you um, park your boat onto the dock, there's those buoys or they have tires against the dock. So it absorbs the shock if, instead of smashing into the, the pier. I use that. I use a water buoy and it's harder it's like hard as cement but i've trained so much that my knuckles are just just rocks they can just bang into rocks so here's another thing you can notice look at that kettlebell at the bottom it's moving around so i'm hitting it so hard that the kettlebell at the bottom is moving it's shifting so it's it's slowly moving to the right you can see right I didn't notice this until I started hitting it. And, oh, it starts moving. So that's a good thing, actually. So that means you're hitting it, hitting it hard enough if it's moving around while going around. Okay. So see, it's totally like slanted now, which can be used for uppercuts now if I wanted to. But see, I place it back in the straight, straight, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Um, I've gotten in trouble in gyms before by setting up a double end bag. Because, again, when you box in a commercial gym or public gym, 
a lot of people are intimidated and they, they will complain to the management. Oh, there's a guy hitting a double and hit boxing. He looks intimidating. I don't like it. Nah, 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 nah. Tell him to stop. I've had that happen a lot. I brought heavy bags to my gyms and I've been told to stop. I can't bring my heavy bags. Like, cause people get intimidated. Normal, regular people who don't know how to fight get intimidated. Crab mentality. And I'll show you, I'll tell you another story. What happened to me today? Some fat lady got in my way, complained to management and said that I was filming. And, uh, the management came and told me to stop. But I wasn't filming her. I was filming my workout. Like, it, you can obviously see, like, the camera was facing me the whole time. But she didn't like it. And she, she, she gave me some passive aggressive Karen bullshit to my face. And put the phone away. Put the camera away. Again, you're going to deal with crabs. Crabs in a bucket mentality, people. Whenever you stand out. The nail that sticks out gets hammered. Whether you do calisthenics or boxing or MMA or wrestling, judo, anything that, or gymnastics, anything that stands out from the normal people, the mundane commercial gym people, they get intimidated, most of them. I'm just telling you from my experience. A lot of people will get jealous. So you'll get a lot of haters. You get a lot of passive aggressive, jealous people not liking what you do. So that's what happened to me today. So, I had to stop filming half away of this video. So my workout today was like three hours. I had to stop like an hour and a half. But uh, later after this footage, I'm going to show you how I do overcoming isometrics in a commercial gym, which is you should stick around. Okay. So just pay attention to what I'm doing. You can borrow whatever I bought, what I use. I use both sides, southpaw, orthodox, shifting my weight, see, see pacing thinking, relaxing. I'm never tired because I pace myself, just like swimming. You have to relax. You have to pace yourself. And you got to know when to push and know when to pull, you know, I'm doing an uppercut there. It's like when you get into this rhythm, this zone, you don't even have to look at the bag. You just, you can do this blindfolded. It's all feeling. I'm serious. Like I've done this blindfolded, looked away, complete away from the bag. And I just let my hands fly. And I know where the bag is based on where I touch it with my knuckles or my hands, or my palms. I do palm strikes, knuckle strikes, back of the hand strikes, elbow strikes, you name it, headbutt strikes. Every every piece of the hand. Finger strikes are are difficult. Okay. Don't I warn this is why I broke my thumb. Okay, I'm warning you of finger strikes. Okay, Bruce Lee did finger strikes. A lot of people don't do this, but be careful when you do finger strikes. Palm strikes, I do palm, hit the hit the bag with the palm, heavy bag with the palm as well. Back of the hand strikes, hit this part. You do that. Hit this knuckle, this knuckle. Use these knuckles. I know in boxing they say use these knuckles, but Bruce Lee he used the bottom. Oh, there I go doing some handstand stuff. This is what I do when I'm bored, okay? When I when I take a break from one exercise, I do something else. So I'm just, yeah, take my mind and then I go back. See? See, my mind is ready. Just clean, clear my mind by doing something else. You would call this a superset in the gym, but I just call it flow. This is me going with flow. Again, Bum, 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 bum. I'm just watching. There's a TV in front of me. Look, I look at what everyone else is doing. Whenever I work out, I look at everyone else. I, I, wa I notice who's working hard, who's slacking off, who's lazy, who's playing with their phone too much. Over time, I get a sense of everyone. It's this just years and years of lifeguarding built in my, my mind, right? Lifeguard training teaches you to observe your entire surroundings all time, right? Never take your eye off your surroundings because that's a few seconds a kid can drown, a person can drown, someone can get into an accident in a pool setting. So a lifeguard has to be alert. How does he do it? By continuous, continuously scanning his environment, his or her environment. And that's what I do. Whenever I'm in a public setting, 
I'm continuously scanning my environment. And that's what you should do too. You should pay attention to your surroundings. You should know who is a potential threat, who's causing trouble, who you get along with, who might be in danger, whatever, right? You just pay attention. You never know when a fire will break out. Someone will bring out a gun. Someone has a knife. Someone's going to start trouble. Someone has a just just bullying others. I saw this guy, this bodybuilder. Complete, completely, complete typical bodybuilder. This, this white bodybuilder guy. Juiced, juiced from head to toe, like sauced. And he just, he kept bumping into people in this gym I was at. I did a trial at this gym. He kept bumping into people and didn't apologize to anyone. And then the people he bumped into, they said sorry and they looked at him and they're like, what? They gave him that what the fuck look. And he just didn't, he just kept walking. He doesn't care. That's a bad, bad attitude. Bad sign of a toxic gym. If they, they let that kind of guy walk around and do that to people, you shouldn't do that. Come on. Be respectful. When you're a fighter, if you train in martial arts, you learn very quickly. You'll get your ass whooped if you're not respectful to everyone. It doesn't matter if their level is beginner, ex intermediate, expert, or if they're bigger than you, smaller than you. You learn to respect everyone around you. It's just common courtesy. I mean... I respect everyone. I don't care if you're a beginner in the gym. If you work hard, if you're training your ass off, I, you, get, you earn my respect. So you don't have to worry about where you are in your fitness journey. You have to worry about your attitude. Are you pushing yourself as hard as you can every time? Jab, 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 jab. Hip flexors, get the knees up. This, that's Muay Thai instinct. Okay, knees up, knees Oh, okay. So last video I said, uh, yeah, things I don't like about Planet Fitness. Uh, one is that there's no artificial turf area, right? So people don't know where to stretch. I, I noticed that people are going to the corners of every gym, this gym and stretching, which is not optimal. And the mats that they have are like hard, this hard, hard coated silicone, which is difficult to stretch on. I mean, I want like a nice soft yoga mat or a gymnastics mat to do my stretching or artificial turf. So that was one problem. Another problem is there's no heavy bag, right? There's no heavy bag in this gym. So again, I'm, I'm thinking I should bring my own heavy bag, but I'll probably get in trouble here because somebody's going to tattletale or tell management. And yeah, Justin's bringing a heavy bag in the gym. I don't like it. <laughs> tell him to stop. And this is a judgment free zone. Gym. That's what they're noticed for, but again, later on, the management came to me, told me to stop filming. And he also told me to stop doing handstands, which is weird. It's like telling someone at the gym, stop doing squats. It's like, I know his mind says, I, yeah, doing handstands is dangerous, but so is doing squats. If you don't know what you're doing, obviously I know what I'm doing when I do my handstands, but he doesn't understand it yet. Right. Maybe to him, it's dangerous. But to me, someone who doesn't know how to do squats safely can be just as dangerous. But think of it that way. Or maybe someone tattletailed on me and told him to tell me I'll not stop doing that, which happens a lot. So I'm telling you, you will get haters. You will get haters, crabs in the bucket mentality. That's me just moving around with handstands. You can see the tape on my Achilles, both of my Achilles. Just so the athletic tape is helping. It's helping with the pain. So if you have Achilles tendonitis, like I do, uh, try applying some athletic tape from the bottom of your foot all the way up to your Achilles. It will help with this, reduce the swelling or the pain that you get from, I don't know, whatever it is that you were doing. So you can see my routine. It's, it's all flow. It's, there's no like four sets of 10. You see other people doing it. It's just flow. Flow, flow, palm strike, palm strike. Do all kinds of strikes. Don't just do the, the knuckle strikes in boxing. Do everything. Train every part of your body, like Bruce Lee said. Boom, 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 boom. It's just like drumming. If you love drumming, you'll love double end bag. Seriously, and I'm a drummer. And I'll tell you, I like double end bags. 
So if you like drumming, if you like the sound of something, dun, 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 the beat, making beat, making music with your own hands, drumming, do double end bag workouts. Okay, it's more fun than I don't know, let's say treadmill. If you don't like doing treadmills, okay. So this is me, bum, 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 drumming, playing music, having fun, okay, moving, flow, being aware of my environment, scanning everything around me, being present. All right. Boom, 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 back of my hand, knuckle, boom, 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 move around, done. Okay, now here comes overcoming isometric. So how do I do it in a commercial gym? Or how? Here's how I approached it. At the bottom is a lat pull down bar. Okay. So I'm using a lat pull down bar. I'm standing on it, and then I'm using a tricep extension bar, and I'm, I brought my gymnastic strap to the gym. So I use clips. Those are clips on each end. Okay. And the same thing like I did in the previous video. I'm just pulling, 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 pulling as hard as I can. All right. Ooh, uh, see, I'm pulling so hard that it's the bar is like lifting my feet up. All right. Boom. See that? Pulling as hard as I can for 10 seconds. So I count like one, two, three. Or like that, right? 10, 12 seconds. Just pulling as hard as you can. Okay, so I'm just adjusting the strap now. Okay, so basically you can use anything. A stick. Uh, just the tra strap itself if you wanted to. But for this demonstration, I just use two bars, like two bars you see at the gym. These are Two things you can you see in every gym a lat pull down bar and a tricep pull down extension bar right and then i just attach them both with my gymnastic strap that's my strap same strap that i used in the overcoming isometrics video that you see in my channel and i got some uh, rubber bands at the end because i don't want the rope all tangled or messy and when you do this exercise uh, I would say that it's very challenging. Your nose will run. I don't know why. My nose runs. And if you have high blood pressure, be careful because you got to breathe. I don't know. This might offset your, I don't know, people with high blood pressure. That's what I'm just thinking because my, my face turns red. My whole body is just like, you know, it's just like um, when you see bodybuilders pose on stage on a contest, like some of them faint after like, like striking a po really hard pose or posing for, for too long, they faint. They're just deprived of oxygen and just beat. That's the feeling that I get. Like I get lightheaded sometimes when I do the, these exercises. So there's no like set, like, like I'm doing this many centimeters or I'm adjusted to this much. You can do that if you want to be precise. For me, I just tighten it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then later on, I'm going to loosen it, loosen it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, just a little bit increments. Lucid. And I just walk around, I pace the, pace around the gym a lot. Because I just, I need to think in between. Worst thing you can do is just stand there and do nothing. Okay, so I just pace, okay? So you can see me in a straight-legged deadlift position, just pulling as hard as I can. You can't see it, but I'm pulling as hard as I can. I wish I could take my shirt off, but I'm sure people would complain in this gym setting. So. All of my muscles are firing and just like, 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 yeah, it's hard. It takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot out of you. See, so you got to rest in between. Okay. Here I go again. Okay. I'm making it tighter. No, probably tighter. Yeah. Really tight. So even lower deadlift position. Okay. And pull as hard as you can. Pull, 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 pull. And you can see me, I'm switching my grip. There you go, see? Both sides. Later on, you'll see me doing single arm uh, overcoming is is isometrics, which is something I don't see other people doing as well. So double arms and then single arm. Okay, both are good. Usually one arm is more dominant, right? stronger than the other so you got to work both sides individually 
pace it, pace it around. Yeah, I'm, I'm like an apex predator in the gym, <laughs> like a hawk circling its prey. Okay, that's me pulling with one arm now. Pull with one arm, just like lifting like a heavy suitcase or luggage. The other arm pulling as hard as I can. I know you can't see it from here. Like you can't see my muscles flexing that much because I'm wearing a shirt and pants, but I would tell you underneath all those clothes, my all my muscles are firing like like that. Really hard. It's like lifting um Thor's hammer off the ground. And the guy over there just realized there's no clips because I took them. <laughs> so you'll need clips. See? You need two carabiners or clips. See? For this. For the bars. Okay, to to attach to the gymnastic strap. Okay. It looks like I'm relaxed here, but I'm not. I'm pulling as hard as I can, but you can't see it because my bo my body's straight. You know? That's the weirdest thing about this exercise. You can't really see it. You can feel it though. It's hell a hard. And at that pacing around like a hawk. And uh this is where Nope, oh, see, yeah, I'm going long making the the rope longer now. Gymnastic strap longer. Okay, pulling it. So see just so I call these airplane sets. You know how an airplane, it starts off on the runway at zero, slowly builds up speed off the runway, more speed, and then lifts up into the air, and it goes, reaches its peak altitude, and then just plateaus, cruises, and then goes, slowly descends, and then lands slowly, and then breaks on the runway on its new destination. That's, that's what I call this. All my exercises are airplane sets. They're not supersets, they're not drop sets, they're not pyramid sets. To me, they're airplane sets. The airplane up in the air and then back down. That's what I call this. All right, so going, going, going. So you see me, this is, this is reality, okay? There's no cuts. This is raw, raw workouts, okay? See, pulling as hard as I can. Bam, look at that arm. That arm is like lifting... Like a, it's like a suitcase off the, the conveyor belt. A really heavy suitcase. Boom. As hard as I can. Look at those forearms. Wow. Okay. Ah, look at this. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. I love this. I love it. Front squat. Front squat pulling up. Ooh, pulling up. And then this. See, I'm switching your grips. Always switch your grips. Okay. Never underestimate. Overhand, underhand. Switch your grips. Single. Boom, I'm out of it. Out of it. Boom, but I gotta keep going for you guys. <laughs> I think, is this where I... No. Back again. Back again. Make it longer. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to the top. If you're wondering, stand on the bar on the bottom, single arm, pull as hard as I can, pull it over me, lift it up, lift up the other arm as hard as you can, pull, 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 my arms are dying, my arms are dying, if you're wondering how you can work out your legs with overcoming isometrics, just bend, bend your legs. Bend your legs, keep your arms straight, and just try to push with your legs instead. Okay? Think of it like you're on a squat machine. Okay? Straight straight arms, bend your legs, uh, make sure the, the, the strap is, is low that you can bend, and then you just start pulling from the legs, pushing with the legs. Okay. So yeah, I'm getting a lot of runny noses here. Overexerting myself. And then, you know when you get nosebleeds when you go into that, that mode or you're just like beast mode? You're just pushing your body so hard. You get nosebleeds. I get runny noses instead. So yeah, I'm going... See the, the adjustment of the strap is getting longer and longer. So I'm going to have to loosen it up longer. Pulling as hard as I can. Oh yeah. Pull that one. As hard as you can. 
Yeah. So you can see it's it's turning into a a military press, right? You can it started with like like a deadlift, then bicep curl, and then there's your bicep curl. It's slowly turning into a military press, and then it's gonna turn into a shoulder press later on. Okay. Front squat position. Pull, 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 pull. Pull as hard as you can. Ugh. It, it, it's a great, fantastic workout. But be careful if you have high blood pressure. I'm just warning you. This is not for the faint of heart. Okay, you might pass out doing this. Doing too much of this. Okay. The rubber bands come off. Zip. And I'm going to go even longer. Make the rope go longer. Longer, longer. Okay. Again, same thing. Single arm. Single arm pull. Pull as hard as I can. When you're doing single arm, you know, I wish I could grab the middle of that bar. But you can't. As you can see the way it's built. So you got to grab one end. And then unfortunately you're at an angle like this when you're pulling. Double lands is fine. Okay, narrow grip, wide grip. Play around. Try them all. Narrow grip, wide grip. Just pushing as hard as I can. It's just like, look, it's like this. Like pushing as hard as I can. Pushing it up. Shoulder press. <sighs> so what does overcoming isometric strengthen? It strengthens everything. But primarily your, your joints and your tendons. Okay? Not just your muscles. Joints and tendons, okay? So it helps with calisthenics, helps with boxing, helps with everything. Okay, it makes you a stronger person. Not many people, many most people strengthen their muscles, but they don't know how to strengthen their joints or tendons. This is the way, okay? So behind the back, just pulling as hard as I can. Just like a, I'm trying to pull, I'm trying to pull a sword out of my back like this. This motion and my tent, my tricep, my shoulder, my hand is firing like crazy. Okay, in front, well, you'll you'll see me later on positioning the strap behind me. Okay, use both the front and the back positions. So it was crowded today. It was Sunday. I think it's because tomorrow's a holiday. I was expecting no one to be here. So. Pacing, sweating, there's like drips of sweat coming out, kind of off from my forehead. And I, so yeah, Planet Fitness has a lot of great things about it and a lot of things I don't like, but no gym is perfect. But as you can see, there's, there's a fan up top. It's well air conditioned, the room, but I still sweat. But it's nice to have an air conditioning, air conditioned room, workout environment. Compared to like, I don't know, like your old school gym where there's no AC and you're just sweating in the summer heat. You're going to pass out easily. So that's one good thing. So behind the, behind the head, pulling as hard as I can, pushing as hard as I can. Yeah, I want to put like a barbell right above my head. I'm thinking of bringing a barbell to this gym to do some single barbell, but I'll probably get in trouble. Uh, so I, I will have to play with the fixed barbells. So I'm going to do single barbell exercises. Okay, so this is me at my peak the height. Height at its peak, pushing as hard as I can. It looks like a handstand. So this is will strengthen your handstand. And then what am I going to do? Going back down again. So loose and now tight, 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 tight again. Look at those arms. Those arms. Woo. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Boom, 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 boom. So, yeah, behind the back. This is how you do it. So, this is like tricep exercises. Pulling as hard as I can, pushing as hard as I can. Behind the back. Look at that. Perfect pose. Love it. 
tightening. Yeah, yeah, boy. I'm scanning, as you can see. I'm looking at that purple, this purple apparatus. So, yeah, those colors are, I don't know what they're for yet. I think they're for the machines. But I want, my instinct is to use them for barbells, right? So you get a, like a fat grip. If you use those fat grips for pull-ups and, yeah, barbells. That's my instinct. So I go back to it. See, I easily get bored. So I, I play around with my environment. So here's what I'm doing. So see what I'm doing right here? So I'm bending my arms. I'm, I'm bending my, my legs. And I'm trying to get my legs incorporated now. So if you're wondering, you can train your legs with overcoming isometrics. It's going to be, oh, this is where I go. Yeah, this shit. So the manager didn't like this. I don't know why. But that, uh, that was me the first time, first attempt doing it on the cycling machines. Cycling machines, they're slanted handles. Slanted handlebars, so it takes some getting used to, but I can get it. That was my first attempt. This guy, like, I don't know, this manager's like, yeah, don't do that. I'm like, sure. If you want someone to, to leave you alone, just say sure. Don't argue with them. Don't reason with them. In their mind, their mind is already made up. They want you to yield so i just said sure and he walked away because i'm I, i'm too busy i have to go back to this exercise so much bullshit in every gym you have no idea okay this is what i do with every time i enter a gym someone's got something against me or beef or want to waste my time take away my attention just interrupting my workout i'm in prayer okay i'm meditating I'm talking to God right now. I'm speaking to my body. I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with my body right now. And I'm talking to my body and I don't need anyone else to interfere with my prayer or my meditation. I'm saying to my body, can you go further today? Can you become stronger today? How much can we do today before you acquiesce to defeat? How much failure can you accept today? This is what I'm telling my body, talking to my body. Like, How much further can you go today with this exercise? Can you go 12 seconds? Can you go 13 seconds? This is serious prayer. Prayer mode. So leave people alone when they work out, please. Okay? And work out alone. You need to work out alone. You, you kids. I don't know why you have to hold hands and walk around the gym like a couple. Like There's, there's strength in numbers, but there's strength in the lone wolf. Being a lone ronin samurai. You'll never get that kind of glory. If you don't do it alone. Be a man. A man walks alone. So I'm done. So proper etiquette. Aha. Uh -huh. You're wondering. Did Justin wipe down the bar? He did. Ah. He cleaned the bar. Of course I have manners. Duh. So I wiped down the bar. Of course I stepped on it. So I don't want anyone's hands getting dirty. So there you go. I practice good gym etiquette, if, in case you're wondering. I put that bar away nice and clean for the next person to use. Oh, so what I was looking at, I was eyeing this thing. See this thing? This thing is new to me. This is like a, a four-way pole. And I climbed it already before. And my goal is to climb it again. But again, it'll, it'll get too much attention from the people around me. I want to climb this pole here, this four-way Thing. Okay, so I'm doing ice, overcoming isometrics for my chest here, in case you're wondering. See, it's right behind. It's like a resistance band now, right behind me. The strap is behind me, and I'm just pushing as hard as I can, like a put, like an impossible push-up. Okay, so this is another thing I don't see people doing with the overcoming isometrics. Okay, gymnastic strap behind you. Push as hard as you can. Push. Okay, it's just like, like you want stronger punches. Overcoming isometrics. Boxers, do this. Okay? Make the strap longer. And just punch or reach out further. Push, 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 push. And you're going to get a rash, red rash, in the back, on your back. Because that strap is just digging into your skin. So, my goal is to climb this, this purple apparatus again. Stand on the top, which I already did. And then 
find a way to grip the sides and do handstand push-ups on top of it. That's my goal, in case you're wondering. Because I'm bored. I want a challenge, and I see this, cha this as a challenge. So I climb these purple poles up to the top, and there's a ring on the top. And I stand on that ring. And the ring is, there's no grips on the top. So I got to figure out what to grab onto when I do a handstand and then do handstand push-ups. What you've seen me do in like the functional station there, because there's handlebars. So this is me. Uh, I like this room, the 30-minute workout room, because no one bothers you. There's, there's no one in here. There's no one doing a 30-minute workout. So they all, you can notice like there's a hamstring curl machine, leg press, leg extension. All the machines that you see out in the public in the main room. Same machines are in here. So this is a pro tip. If you don't want to wait in line for a machine out in the main room, go into this room. So this is just me just doing those lower ab exercises. Uh, I was going to do a handstand, but the station on the right is wobbly. You can see it wobble with my right hand. It's wobbling. So I was like, eh, nah, don't risk it. So just do some... Yeah, lower leg ab raises. Then I go back to the hamstring. Did I plan this? No. I just saw it and I just wanted I, I just gravitated towards this. I was like, okay. Like, do I need to use the shoulder press machine? No, because I'm going to be doing so many handstand exercises today. So do I need to do try the see the bicep machine here? Bicep curl. Not really, because I don't want big biceps. I, my biceps are big enough. I'm doing just pull-ups. I don't want them bigger. So there, there's a key to functional fitness, right? If you don't want some part of your body too big, it's too heavy or taking up too much oxygen. Like I'm too big right now. Look, I'm too big. I should be lighter, smaller, less muscle. I just grew this by on accident. Like this came to me and I don't even lift heavy. So there you go. Gymnasts, know, they're freakishly strong because of their mind, I think, their mindset, this grit. Gymnasts have pure grit. They, they just go further than any other athlete, in my opinion. And yeah, they're, in the Olympics, now, there's this pistol shooting or there's, what is it, the hurdle race. There's, yeah, there's all kinds of sports in the Olympics, but you got to look at the Olympics logo itself. It's five rings, five gymnastics rings. People think of Olympics. The first thing I think of, and most people think of, is gymnastics. If you want to be, I don't know, if you want to be good, if you want to get better, if you want real strength, gymnastics. That's the key. So I'm not counting here. I just keep going. I'm going to hold it. I just thought I would hold it for fun. But the, the right stand is wobbling so much. It's not so solid. So maybe it's slanted. But I just do it. Do, 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 do. It's like there's a dip bar I can do it on, but nah. Okay, here I go. Doing some more fun stuff. Whoop, dunk, dunk, and then I hit the ceiling. So I hit the ceiling. So I have to bring my legs back down. So what was I thinking here? Oh yeah, stretch. So after you do like a, a set of, I don't know, what I just did there, muscle ups, stretch, think. You need time to think. It's just like performing at the Olympics, okay? After you do like a vault or uneven bars or whatever exercise you're competing for, you need time to think. I wish there was like a, a replay footage. Look back, instant replay, slow motion. I could look at the camera, but no. I wish there was like a monitor, the TV it showed instant replay. Okay, so this is me just uh, doing some air flare exercises. Okay, just one arm. Boom, boom. One arm, tuck. One arm, tuck. Okay? Let's just get the blood flowing. Uh, 
there is no space to practice air flares. So this is the widest space in this gym, as you can see right here. And, but there's so much foot traffic. Boom, boom. Kip up. Get everything going. Make sure everything's working, okay? You use it or you lose it. So you might as well use it. Kip up. Boom, boom. Get low. Boom. Everything warmed up. Boom. Boom. If you want to know how to do a kip up, uh, learn how to roll first. Get comfortable rolling onto your back, onto the floor. Okay? You can do a stretch where you roll onto your back, you lift your legs, and put your legs on top. This is me swinging. This is like flare exercises. Okay? Thomas Flare, E-Boys, you probably know this. Okay? Hip flexors can get involved. Swing side to side. And then this is me pacing like an apex predator again. Stretching. Healing my body. Listening to my body. Communicating. Is everything okay? Again, I'm mindful of others. I'm paying attention to my surroundings. I don't want to kick anyone in the head. So I'm not going to like swing around upside down legs see the guy was like oh sit in front of the camera I don't care if you walk in front of my camera go ahead like this is a public space go ahead do whatever like if you knock down my camera yeah that's that's fine go ahead like if it's an accident yeah apologize if you want but things happen so don't worry like, I'm not one of those tiktok Creators that makes videos for rage bait. Those videos are so stupid. Okay. These are educational videos. This is showing you the raw truth. I'm trying to teach you guys how I work out my mindset. This is the proof. This is what I do. Endure every day. Get a strong mindset, strong body. Grit. This is something you don't see anymore. Like this is like, Bronze era bodybuilding, like before steroids, bodybuilding was something that was beautiful to look at, where, where men just trained their hearts out, and they didn't use on or rely on any chemicals to do this. It was pure grit. Pure grit. Okay, so I'm just doing it here, just looping my, my feet under. It's like a skin the cat, sped up. But, whoop. So I have to be careful of that bar. So sometimes like, you'll go fast and then your, your shoes will clip that bar and then it stops all your momentum and then you won't be able to complete your back tuck, okay? Which is what I want, okay? I want like a clean back tuck from start to back tuck, boom, land and land like a cat, okay? This is, this is just toughening, boom, you're landing for back tucks. And uh, it's a great exercise. Again, if you don't like cardio, do this. See, when I'm just going, 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 nonstop. Boom, whoop, boom. So if your feet have a hard time going through, like threading, like looping through that, hitting the bar, try to get the bar onto your fingers like this. So if you do, if I grip the bar, if I grip the bar like this, then... I will hit the bar sometimes with my shoes because the shoes have padding. So what I try to do is I try to grip the bar like this sometimes in order to let my shoes go through without hitting the bar. So I want it smooth, smooth. Yeah. So it depends on your shoes you got. Like I got like chunky Nike shoes, running shoes on. So the, the padding is a detriment. The soles are chunky, right? So, what? so I can't like, with straight legs, like knees together. So I have to cross my legs, as you can see. So another way around this is to use gymnastics rings. So you don't have a bar to compete with. But uh, yeah, I don't have any. So I'm just using the bar. Whoop. Clear it. See, my, my shoes hit the bar. It happens. So I'm, my goal is to just keep going. Just test my endurance here. Whoop, boop, whoop, boop, boop, boom, and land, land clean. Like, 
the first attempt doesn't count. It's the last attempt that counts. So how much further you can go. Okay. So the last attempts are not supposed to be clean. They're supposed to be dirty. So I don't care about but anyway, any judge says, oh, it wasn't clean. No, no, I'm just pushing myself as hard as I can. Push, 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 push. Yep, yep. Okay, so you get the momentum. So you go let the break. Now, here's where I got in trouble. This, this lady behind this camera was like, don't film, don't film. Like, why? I need to see what I'm doing. And this guy here is like asking me questions and stuff. How do I do this? How do I do that? And I was like, I don't have time. To answer i'm in workout mode so he's asking me i'm like how do i do that i'm like <laughs> like just do it i just kept telling him just do it I'm like what does he want to know like he wants a textbook answer like he wants me to explain to him for 30 minutes like this is why i make these videos okay if you see anyone who's really good at something don't ask him a thousand questions just provide value first this guy is not providing value to me so he's just asking questions. I'm like, I'm busy figuring this exercise. By the way, I figured it out. This sliding thing, you put your the tip of your toes on to make it the hardest. So I was putting my knees on that that pad, and I didn't feel anything. I was like, what is this? It's nothing. So I was like, eh, okay. Now I felt it. So stretch again. Stretch the hamstrings. Always stretch. Bow, pray. I'm just praying right now. Praying to the gym gods, please. Don't anyone bother me, please. No more solicitations. Okay, some flag exercises. Okay, now my goal is to get a clean, nice, horizontal flag. It's not there yet. I'm going to make it straighter. So you start with a wide, and then you go straight. Okay? It's okay, but it's not clean. Okay, I got to make it cleaner, and I make it longer. So, so... I start with the flag, so I go with the flag like this to make a nice I say V, and then I make it straight. I gotta find that that horizontal. See that? See that? It's like it's like this. My flag looks like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to make it nice, clean horizontal like this. But my legs, if these are my shoes. These this is what my shoes look like. Okay. So if I don't have this place doesn't have a mirror. So again, you gotta go with feeling. If you don't have a mirror, okay, and you're gonna lower it. Sometimes low, too low. Your mind thinks like this is too low, but in actual reality, it looks like this. So you gotta keep adjusting. So I'm just doing the attempts, doing attempts. So I'm going on to my back. See my butt is like this. See my butt is high. I want my butt lower, lower, fool. So that's the thing. Like you can't see anything, right? If there's no mirror, so. My flag looks like this right now. So here, okay, so see that? See my shoes? It looks like this. Right now my flag looks like that. So I'm trying to get it like this. Okay, so in order to do this, I have to think like this. It has to be like this low in my mind in order to get this. See, adjustment. So it takes time, practice. So I gotta practice more of my flags. And usually one side is, um, more dominant so it's usually my right arm that's at the bottom which is stronger so i can hold the flag longer with my right arm down but if on the opposite end if my left arm is down then yeah i have a harder time holding it longer so here's my stairmaster workout guys you need to do the stairmaster totally unrated like think of i think of stairmaster as running up hills running up stairs if you, you know boxers they do this they, they they you go to this like a stadium or a mountain, and you see boxes running up stairs outdoors. So how can you do this in an indoor gym? Use the Stairmaster. Okay, but what I'm doing here is I'm not going to demonstrate running up stairs on this thing. No. I'm just easing into it first. Okay, so this is how easy into it. Stairmaster workout. I'm doing a 360. So you see, I'm, I'm facing backwards, slowly facing backwards. So I, I do a 360. I go around. I face all directions of this Stairmaster. Very good. It gives you spatial awareness. Helps you for coordination. Like it's, This is hard. I haven't done this for a long time. Went backwards. 
Da, 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 da. Okay, so sometimes I touch one handlebar for balance. Because you can trip, you can slip easily. So get used to this motion, 360. There's no one says no one says that you have to face forward all the time doing Stairmaster. So this is one thing you can work on is your coordination 360. And then later on when you get really good, you can start running up a stairmaster. But it's dangerous, very dangerous. Okay, so it's only for the advanced. Uh, and I don't know why people they, they grip the handlebars on stairmaster and they they look sunken, you know, like you've seen people like they grab the handlebars on each end of the stairmaster and they look like this. They put all their weight onto the handlebars. That's not how I see it proper form when it comes to stairmaster. You're supposed to use your legs. Use your legs 100% entirety if you can. Okay, yeah, I hold on to the handlebars sometimes. But most of the time I don't grab onto the bars. I just rely on my legs to carry me up. And that's the ultimate goal for stairmaster. If you can't carry yourself up without holding on to the bars, that's the first challenge for you, okay? You start with two bars holding on to, and then one bar holding on to, then gradually let go. It's just like riding a bike with no hands, you know? You, sh you gotta let go of the bars. Don't rely on the bars. You're cheating yourself. I, I don't care. Like, I've seen guys like, or girls. Is it girls? Girls, they spend like an hour on the Stairmaster and they, they're sunken like this and they put the hands on the bars. Like That's not your full body weight. Use your full body weight. That's your first goal. And then later on, Push yourself even further. Hold on to dumbbells. Light dumbbells. That's even harder. Light dumbbells. And your body weight. And 360. And running up the Stairmaster. There's your workout. And again, my preference is to run upstairs, outdoors. In a park. In a stadium. On a mountain. I prefer that feeling. Compared to the Stairmasters. Because you, you can see like Stairmasters, there's a maximum of like four steps. You can latch on to. See? Four. There's four. Ultimately, you're only you're only allowed four steps to latch on to. And if you miss if you miss one, then you'll slip and fall. So that's why I prefer outdoors. You don't have to worry about this, right? Sometimes I run up stairmasters and the one that's coming out from the top doesn't come out on time. From, from my lead foot to catch on to or I'm too low so like you'll be too low on the stairmaster or too high is what I'm saying but you'll never always be in the middle of that stairmaster and you only have four steps to work with so that's the problem with stairmasters you, you can't run on them easily and I don't think they were supposed to be meant for running uphill but they should be so that's why I run uphill on a treadmill so I set the treadmill I set the treadmill like this and I start running or walking, which is what I see a lot of people don't do, not doing. Running uphill or walking uphill on a treadmill is much safer, obviously. Duh. You can use dumbbells too, which is what I do. Power walking. I'll probably show that in another video. I did that in a previous workout. And this is me, shits and giggles. The end of the video. I was like, I'm looking at the treadmill beside me and I got to do it. So I did it. This is my first attempt. Watch. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck you, manager. I'm going to do it anyways. All right. This is my first attempt on these treadmills, just doing it. And so the bars are hand are wider and I did a graceful descent because I don't want to piss people off. So I could have landed hard, but mm, no dismount. Okay. This is the end of my workout. My shirt is soaked. Yeah, I feel good. Boom, look at that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Drying my shirt. Okay, so here's me trying to pose for you guys, which I, I don't really do. I don't really pose. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. Big and strong tight what do you think guys did you enjoy the workouts for today did you learn something today ask your questions down below questions or comments 
leave them down below so I can answer them in the next uh, commentary video. Hope you're enjoying this format. Uh, I had to stop the sound because there's too much copyright and I get getting demonetized, if you're wondering. So that's why I'm doing this kind of format for now. So I hope you enjoy it. Feedback, comments, questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video, boy.